Welcome to another new video of Solve Computer Science. Today we'll see this program called Homebox, which is a server that is used for personal inventory. So this is free and open source software, which runs uh, through Docker. And we'll see later how to install it and configure the reverse proxy. We'll see Apache. And so here I've uh, added a few items. See here, total items 39. So you can add items, location for the items. There's a, a search function, the profile, and some tools. We'll start with, the, for example, these PCI Express adapters, which I added. So uh, as you can see here, you can add uh, uh, the name of the object, which is this one, the title, uh, the description, the quantity, which you can increase or decrease like this. Then there are lots of other fields. So you can also do edit like this and uh, you can uh, uh, change all the fields. You can add custom fields. You can also uh, toggle this advanced uh, uh, switch. You can add pictures to your items. You can also add the purchase price and date, uh, and also the sold price and date, and lots of other fields. You can add a custom fields here like this. You can add labels to the objects. So for example, here, this is electronic, so you can do like that and save. Now I have the two labels. See here, I have the three items categorized as electronics. Anyway, let's see the search function. So here there are a few items. So here there's, a, for example, a calculator. You can add the pictures here. So you can also add, of course, food. I think it's very, it's a very interesting uh, piece of software. It's worth to try. And yeah, for example, there's the, there are the locations. Uh, you can nest the location and add objects in it. See, and you can also add a parent object. So for example, the power supply of this Dell Latitude laptop is of course a child object of this of the laptop itself. See here, there are lots and lots of other objects. You can also search by a location, for example. See, here I filtered the fridge. I have the three items. Okay, now I toggle these two. I remove the fridge. I can also do this one. I see I've added quite a few quite a few of them. Yeah, you can also filter by labels. You can add a field selector. Uh, for example, yeah, I added uh, two fields. So this is the expiry date. And this is if an item has been opened or not. So for example, let's try this one. Yes or no. And then we search. Okay, so these are all... Um, items so see do, do it yourself consumer i added this label okay these are all items already opened so i can track them and now i can clean the okay the filters if i add a, a new item for example this one this is a, a tape so let's see write it in italian Do it self consumer. This is a transparent tape, so okay. Now we can edit it. So manufacturer is Lisa, like the other tapes. Uh, yeah, there's no serial number, so you don't have to bother even putting all the information. And of course, you can add that the tape has already been opened. In my case, you can add like this. The field name is case sensitive. And I think also the, the value name. So you have to remember how you did it. And then you do save. Of course, you have also the QR codes if you click here. Okay, see, it has been added in the recently added items. If you go to the servers, like we have, for example, this Noctua fan, the three items. See, now it costs 27.90 at this moment. And you have the child items. Yeah, these are the child items. So there are uh, several adapters in the box of the Noctua fan, the two noise reduction adapters, and the four uh, three pin adapters. So you can add them like this. Okay, see. So the server has uh, uh, these two uh, child items. So I don't think there is a limit on the number of nesting you can do. So that's very interesting. And now the tools. Uh, okay, so you can add uh, labels. 
So these labels are uh, encoded as QR codes in a PDF file. You can also input and export your uh, uh, items in a CSV format, just in case. Anyway, now we'll see uh, the server configuration, which is quite straightforward. In this channel, we've seen a configuration which is much harder to work with, but this one is quite easy. In the Apache configuration, I had to add an option for the WebSocket, and I found it in a GitHub issue, but I'll show it to you in a moment. Okay, so this is the Docker Compose file you need to use, and you can find it in the GitHub repository. Yeah, the version in the GitHub repository is a little missing in some data, but yeah, I found the environment variables here in the documentation. Uh, where is it? Here, uh, quick start. Okay, see here we have some environment variables which weren't in the original Docker Compose file. And here you have the table with all the environment variables. Yeah, uh, I added, I also added the mailer uh, in my version. I added the mailer environment variables, but for the moment, I don't think they're needed, but this software is still in beta. Yeah, you can see it here. Homebox is currently in early active development and currently in beta stage, but yeah, for the things I tested, it works very well. It's fast and uh, I think it's usable. Now let's hope that when uh, I need to update, I don't find any problems because that will be the thing that maybe will trigger some problems, we'll see. Yeah, here are, you see it are all the features. So I just showed you a few of them, but there I think there are more. Yeah, so if you go back to the uh, Docker Compose file, so yeah, you select the image. So here I tagged uh, this one, which is the latest release. And yeah, I added the three environment variables which were in the quick start Docker Compose file here. And then uh, we have the, as I said, the mailer variables, but I don't think they need probably all that. Yeah, I just have to replace these values, the FQDN and the mailer password here. Again, the FQDN. Then this one is important because of course the data uh, needs to be persistent. So you need to configure the volume, the path for the volume. Then the post, this one uh, remains fixed to second server form five. And here you select your uh, port, the port you want to be exposed. Yeah, and uh, that's it for the Docker Compose. Yeah, and this one is the Apache configuration. So this will be a reverse proxy. So here in the first uh, um, virtual host, in the first block, uh, we have the port 80 configured. So this will just redirect to the port uh, 443 to have HTTPS. Yeah, and uh, of course you need to put your server name here and uh, yeah, now I added this uh, block here so I can only access Homebox from my local network just in case. So this will be safer for me. And uh, yeah, the, you need to add, of course, the proxy pass and proxy pass reverse configuration to have your, uh, your reverse proxy set up like this. And then there is this important part of the WebSocket, which if you don't put, you'll get uh, errors while updating your uh, items. So this one is required. In practice, you just redirect the WebSocket connections to the WebSocket protocol on the same port like this. These are just some conditions to filter all the other requests. And yeah, of course, you don't have to forget about the HTTPS certificates. The WebSocket problem, I found the solution here because there wasn't any documentation for this. If you read here, so this user just uh, did the, the user proxy pass and added the options like this. So you just have to uh, copy these and it works. At least it worked for me because otherwise you won't have uh, updates in real time. And so it kind of breaks the experience. Uh, before closing off, I want to show you that there is also a demo if you want to try it without installing anything, which you'll find from the GitHub page. So this is the login, I see. Somebody has written some things here. Yeah, okay, so I think we're done for this video. I hope it was useful and uh, I'll leave all the links to the configuration files in the video description if you need them. If you think this video was useful, leave a thumbs up and uh, subscribe. Hit the bell icon and as always, bye bye.